Today I'm going to be doing an acrylic painting demonstration of this cheetah. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. For this painting, my goal was to take this reference photo, this one comes from wildlifereferencephotos.com, and combine a pop art style with a more realistic style. Now, this is a bit different than anything I've done before, so I really wasn't sure how it was going to come out. It was largely an experimental piece. I have painted this on a Fredericks Mixed Media Nature Core board. These are extremely smooth, and I like this because when you're doing that pop art style where you're getting these blocky, kind of solid groups of color, especially on the, the cheetah's back, I was not fighting with the tooth of the canvas. It just flows on so smooth. It keeps my edges nice and clean. If you're doing a lot of detail, something with a very smooth surface like this is great. Another option that would have worked would be the Fredericks Blue Label Ultra Smooth. That would have given me great results as well. Or a watercolor canvas board. The paints that I'm using for this are Liquitex Basics, and I will have links to all of the supplies below in the video description. If you are supporters on Patreon, I have the one and a half hour version of this tutorial available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now, we will move on to this tutorial. I started by painting my entire background with this sort of teal color. I mixed phthalo blue, phthalo green, almost a 50-50 mixture there, and added white with a tiny bit of black just so that it wasn't too fluorescent. Painted my entire background with that, and then I used tracing and transfer paper to transfer the cheetah that I had drawn onto the background. And I do have a video showing you how to use that process. I will have a card pop up if you want to check that out. But that keeps my lines very, very clean, and I don't have any eraser marks over that background, which was really important in something like this, where I don't want eraser smudges on something that is totally solid. I can't cover a smudge with a tree or something like that. So the next thing that I'm doing is blocking in my background. Now my goal for this piece was to combine two different styles, a sort of pop art style with more realism. So the face, the portion that I'm working on here, this is going to end up being my more realistic portion of the painting, but it's still just blocking in the color, so I'm not too worried about tiny detail at this point. The majority of what I'm using here is raw sienna, unbleached titanium white, and Van Dyke brown. I've got a bit of burnt sienna mixed in there as well. You can see nothing super realistic. I do want to make sure that my brush strokes are going in the right direction for the fur, but I'm not doing the little detail yet. Now this side of the cheetah, I wanted to be mostly in black and white. So I'm starting with a base of a very, very pale gray. I didn't want to start with just white because then when I come on top of the white, it wouldn't show up. So this way I'll get the two tones of the pale gray and white. Just blocking that in first. Now you can see here, I drew out a lot of spots that I wanted on the cheetah that weren't really spots, just my lights and my darks. But I've got a lot of detail in there. I'm only using that as a general guideline. When I paint this style, when I get into this more pop art style that I'm, I'm working on here, I am pretty loose with that. I, I do want to keep my edges very clean, my brush strokes very smooth, and in order to do that, I want to make sure that I've got a, a fair amount of paint on my brush with a bit of water to make it flow smoothly. But I am not being skimpy on that paint. I'm definitely using a lot of it on the brush, and I'm using a flat brush here. This is a Taclon Bristled Flat Brush, and this gets me smoother edges. They tend to be more harsh than a filbert. With, normally when I paint wildlife, when I want things to be very realistic, I'm gonna go with a filbert. It's going to give me softer brush strokes. But here where I want it to be very bold, this flat brush is a better choice. I'm able to keep my edges much more clean than I'm able to with a filbert. Here I'm just using a mixture of brown with a little bit of black and blocking in where the darkest portions are going to be. I am going to take a lighter color and go over all of this. This is just to sort of map out where my main shapes are. I'm using actual black. This is Mars black here on the black and white section. Again, using a fair amount of paint on that brush. It's not so much that I'm creating almost that palette knife look, the real thick, chunky, but it is thick enough that you can see my edges are very, very smooth. I'm not having to fight to hide that bumpy edge look where the paint is just barely catching the top of the tooth of the canvas. I'm using a good amount of paint here, and this canvas being a, this one is the Fredericks Nature Core Mixed Media Paint Pour. These are extremely, extremely smooth anyway, so that's going to make it much easier for me to keep these smooth shapes. This one is an 18 by 24 inch. So here I'm taking my raw sienna and just going right over those spots. You can see I'm covering most of it up, but I can still see the spots through that. 
So my map is still there. This just makes it a little bit easier because of the layering process I'm going to have to do here. This makes sure that I have all of that background covered up. Blocking in the mouth. And again, when I say blocking in, I get this question a lot. What do you mean when you say you're blocking in? I'm pretty much painting things in solid colors. I'm not really worried about shading. I'm not even worried about having the right color. I know the tongue has this pinkish color, so we'll just paint it a pink color. I know that there are teeth here. These are not the right colors for the teeth. I just want to have them blocked in so I know where they go as I paint and start shading. I want my background color covered up. So I'm going to take this black, this is Mars black, it is the more opaque black, go along the edge here with this really, really bold outline. Pulling some of that around the cheetah's head where it starts to fade into the fur there. You can see I'm keeping the brush strokes, I hold the brush sideways and make these sketchy lines, but I've still got a good amount of paint on that brush so that those lines are very bold. I'm going to add some detailing on the eye. This is with my magenta and my raw sienna with some unbleached titanium white. And I'm just kind of reshading things. This is not even close to done. You can see this is very, very flat. When I come over this later on with the shine of the eye, that's what's going to make this look more three-dimensional and realistic. If you don't have the shine on the eye there and have the shine somewhat curved, the eye remains flat like what I've got there. Now this color here is a mixture of what I had made in the back with more white. It's not solid white. And I want these loose swirls. I don't want these to be completely smooth. Painting that in, decided I didn't like the line there, so I had to wipe that off. And to wipe something off, if you decide you don't like something that you did, as long as it's still white, you can essentially erase it by taking a clean brush and some water, reworking that area, and then just keep pulling it off with paper towel, just dab it and add more water as needed until you get that area all the way off. Coming back through with that same color I used on the swirls and going over some of the black and white portion. Again, I've got a good amount of paint on that brush. I find the brush that you use for creating this look does make a big difference. I definitely prefer those flat filberts, or I'm sorry, flat filberts. Let's mix two words together. The flat Taclon bristled brushes. And here I'm taking a mixture of my raw sienna with unbleached titanium white and starting to block in the shapes going around the dark areas. Again, I've got a really good amount of paint on that brush. As I start moving up the neck, I start changing the way that I'm making those brush strokes so that it looks more like loose fur. I'm making a sort of sketchy line, but I still have a decent amount of paint on the brush. It's not as soft as I would do normally when painting in realism. And the biggest tip I can give you for painting that pop art style, just get that paint on the brush. It does not look right if you're worried about having too much and just barely having a little bit of paint on your brush. You just will not get the right look. Here is with the unbleached titanium white coming through with highlights. I want to make sure that both of my previous colors still show through. I'm not trying to cover everything up. Now I'm coming through with black and getting just a few of the spots. I don't want to cover all of the dark areas with this. It's the black is almost inside of it. So you still have you have the black and then the brown behind it or around it. So now onto the realism section, and we're going to go through this much faster because you can watch this in real time on the live stream. Now, one of the problems that I had in I ended up having to go back through and change this. When I'm painting in realism, I would have left this much detail, these tiny, tiny bits of fur all over the face. What I found out once I had all of this layered in there, it, it blended in. The face was just kind of meh. It didn't stand out as anywhere near as much as the body. With the pop art, those con the contrast is just so high. When I moved on to the realism with these tiny bits of detail, the face just, it kind of blended into the background.
So while I definitely plan on mixing these two styles again, the difference is I won't waste my time with so many of the little brush strokes that I'm doing here. Later on, I'm going to come through with a larger brush and make more definite, larger brush strokes for the fur. You can still have realism without having tiny, tiny detail. Here, I'm leaning more towards photorealism, and I just didn't like that combination. The body was standing out more than the face, just the contrast in the body there. So you'll see when I come through later, the, the more bold brush strokes that I'm going to start making, and I like that result a lot better. And actually some of that I ended up doing off camera because I had, I thought I was finished. I left it on the easel for a few days and it was just driving me crazy that the face didn't stand out as much as the body. And so I went through and made even more with the bold brush strokes on the face. So on to the texture of the nose, just kind of dotting in the highlights. I don't care about having the color right. I'm going to come through and do quite a bit of glazing for tinting the color there. When you're painting something this large, one big tip I can give you is do not just paint the nose solid black, solid gray. When you're painting animals, make sure you get the detail in there. The noses have a lot going on. The inside of the ears, the inside of the mouth, those are areas that are often skipped over, but they're pretty important. And especially when working this large, it will not look right if this was just one solid color. Watch where those highlights and shadows are. So I think when doing this style in the future, you won't see me using that liner brush on much more than the eyes, the nose, and the inside of the mouth. For the most of everything else, I think I'll be using much larger brushes. Remember, when painting fur, just watch that reference photo. Make sure your brush is moving in the direction of that fur, that you've got it the right, the same length as what's on that reference photo, and that it's going in the right direction. And what I'm doing here is blocking in all of the strands of fur. I don't really worry about the color so much because I will come back through and glaze color and shading over that. For the teeth, this is an area that a lot of people think, teeth, they're white. They're not. Um, these are actually really dark brown, and this is where you're using some sort of a color matching tool to help you. I've got videos both using Photoshop to do this and apps to do this. I'll have some cards pop up so you can check those out. But it'll make it easier. You can use that to test different colors of the painting that you're working on to check what color it is. And these teeth, even for me, were a lot darker brown than I expected when I tried that in with the color matching tool. But it makes it easier to be bold and get color more accurate than to think, oh, their teeth, I'm just going to paint them white. Brown seems too dark, even though that's what the photo looks like. It seems too dark. When you see it with a color matching tool, I think it makes it a lot easier to accept, okay, it really does need to be that dark and go ahead and paint it that color. Now, this area that I'm working on on the black, this is the shine of the mouth. For that color, I'm using a bit of black and white to make gray and then adding a tiny, tiny bit of blue just to cool off that gray a little bit. And I'm using doing that for the majority of the shine that you're seeing on the black. I then come through with a little bit of titanium white for some the brightest highlights, but I don't use that too much. Building up more with the fur here. And this is actually a rake brush that I'm using. They you, you get a lot of brush strokes from one brush stroke, basically. The br bristles are splayed. They're kind of cut out so that with one brush stroke, you get several individual lines. They, you have to be careful with those because you have uh, one thing that happens a lot is people will overdo that and all of their fur marks look too uniform. So when I use these, I'm constantly twisting and turning the brush and then I'm going to come back through with a liner brush to better define some of these clumps and clusters so that it isn't too uniform. 
They can also be used for creating grass, but the same thing. You've got to be really careful. You don't want to use it for all of the grass. If I use it, it's only for areas here and there to get in the base, and then I come back through with a liner or a round brush and better define those individual strands. Now here, look at the chin, how dark I went on that. That is a dark, dark brown. I had to go that dark so that when I came on top with the lights, the light would show up with having that dark in between them. It's not that the entire chin is that dark, but I need those dark bits to poke through these lighter layers that I'm putting on now. So that's why I went that dark there. Just going through really quickly and as I move out my brush strokes are getting more and more bold for you can tell that it's fur but it's not super realistic and that basically the look that I'm getting on the neck is probably what I'll do for the future when mixing these two styles because I needed something that stands out a bit more and is a bit more bold to make it work with how much contrast I had on the pop art section I think this close-up really shows what I'm talking about there where the fur even though I haven't gone through and started glazing yet the fur on the face it just kind of blends in whereas the fur on the rest of the body it's just so bold so the the challenge when combining the two styles like this is to make them mesh together well I've got to balance that out just working on smaller areas correcting my shadows here using a liner brush with some titanium white to brighten up that the hair on the chin there remember when you're painting fur don't go too uniform that is one of the biggest mistakes that people will make they'll, they'll realize hey this looks great when I make this type of brush stroke it looks like fur and they make that same brush stroke everywhere that then looks terrible it makes everything look very fake if you want it to look realistic when you're painting wildlife or even nature if you're painting landscapes you've got to have variation that variation is a really really big deal in creating realistic look look looks I can't talk it's too early so you can see I pulled back through that dark black that I had on the outer edge. I pulled that around the face as well. Now I'm coming through with some of my background color and making some bold strokes in the face. That's going to help balance things out a bit more. Adding some of that color in the body as well. I'm also going to make some of that magenta color that I used on the face and pull that into the body so that those two mix together. little individual brush strokes there now I had thought I was done at that point but I went back through and you can see now how bold I made some of those brush strokes on the face in order to make it mesh and blend well with the rest of the piece now I'm much happier with it and the funny thing is it only took maybe 20 minutes of work unfortunately I didn't have the camera on at the time I didn't realize I was gonna make that many brush strokes but I went back through and a lot of that was the teal color I pulled that in the face in quite a few areas and then I also came back through with some unbleached titanium white and brightened up my highlights because everything Thing was too mid-range I had to get some of those definite lights in order to make that face even though that's not super super realistic I had to do that in order to balance the entire painting with the body and that is my finished painting I knew I'd be getting some boxes soon of canvases from Fredericks I had given them a few things that I needed so yay I just want to show you the order that came while I was filming the voiceover for this video so there's one box I think there's another one behind that here so there's two and there's the rest I don't even know where I'm gonna store these there are a lot of canvases I see a lot of paintings in our future if you're here for tonight's live stream I'll probably have most of these unpacked and behind me so you'll be able to see what came in a lot of these boxes I'm kind of excited to see what they sent me hey have you subscribed if not there's a handy button right there that you can click on it'll help you to keep up to date with all five of my new art videos every single week I'll see you guys tomorrow